Hello guys, so welcome back to How to Rhino channel. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about how to redesign project designed by the Mohan and Albasha uh, using only Grasshopper. Today's tutorial we will divide into two parts. Uh, first part uh, will include creating uh, this inner 3D shape, which is uh, made. Uh, rotating and uh, scaling these uh, dodecagons along the uh, z-axis. In the second part of the tutorial I will explain you how to make these vertical fins on the facade. Alright, so first I will briefly go through the content of this tutorial. First we'll be creating the slider and with it we can change the height of this basic shape and uh, with the other slider we can change the size of the polygon from which uh, this geometry is made. In this case it's uh, the decagon, so it's 12 sides but we can change uh, less or more, it doesn't matter. Next uh, step will be creating the graph mapper and with it we can change the, the shape, the scaling factor of, the, of these polygons along z-axis. As you can see, um, some part is scaled. All right. So modifying this slider, the whole uh, geometry is made. But our result should be something like this. Uh, then next step, uh, we'll be twisting the geometry. Right now, the rotation of the polygons are. Um, zero. If you bump this slider up, the twisting uh, factor is getting bigger. After we finish with modeling uh, this basic 3D shape, uh, the next step will be adding uh, the vertical fins. And also we can rotate them. Maybe they're following this geometry, this uh, outside uh, surface or they can be rotated and it depends of of the of the angle of the rotation here we can change the angle so this means the bottom part of them are rotated so let's say they're rotated by zero degrees and one of them are rotated by 90 degrees and uh, also with graph mapper we can uh, add one more layer of complexity. All right, and also we can scale them along Z axis. And we can change uh, the thickness as well using the last graph mapper. As you can see in this part, the thickness is uh, the biggest. But all on the on the bottom and on the top, the thickness is the smallest. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So first, we will make the point, which we are going to reference it from the Rhino. So let's say here. After that, we need to create the decagon. So search for the polygon. And uh, let's say polygon will be located on the XY plane. So it's here because right now by default polygon has uh, six sides. So we need we need uh, 12. I can hide this part here. And let's create the radius for the polygon. Let's say maybe maybe it should be bigger. Thirty. Okay. Maybe I will move this point here. Okay, next step is to 
multiply this shape along normal vector to this plane. In this case is x, y plane. So deconstruct, deconstruct plane. All right. The best way is to find the, the normal vector. So we need to have a normal vector and along this vector we will create these uh, polygons. And to find this vector we will use command cross product based on the, these two based on these two vectors it will this this component uh, give us the normal vector normal vector to this plane here which is this one it's this vector so i can say move amplitude this vector this is the okay goes here geometry is the polygon okay the next thing is to define uh, for how much we want to move this um, polygon along z axis for for that uh, we need uh, component range and uh, range give us uh, equally distributed uh, numbers within a certain domain so let's say we will have domain from 0 to 200 and uh, we want to distribute from zero to, we want to distribute um, this domain into 65 values. All right. So, and if I connect these items with the, with the amplitude of the vector, which we previously um, defined, we will get this result. So this is the height of the of the tower, and this these are the divisions along uh, vertical axis. I don't know. Let's say 60 for now, and here we can say 180. All right. So right now we will scale these polygons. Okay, this is the geometry we want to scale. The base will be this plane. So, okay, we need origin, origin plane. This is the plane and this is the origin of these planes. On that way, we define the on which each of these polygon are located all right so this is the actually we just need the center i'm sorry my fault and we need the scale factor for the scale factor we will use graph mapper why we need graph mapper i will sketch here because we want to get this kind of outline of the object so this will have one scale factor another one will have this scale factor and then bigger 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 and then it gets smaller smaller uh, scale factor for this we'll use graph mapper all right again range and uh, from zero to one because for the range we should always use zero to one domain later on we'll remap it uh, for the 
desired uh, result but right now we always should start this range for the for the graph mapper with domain 0 to 1 and we want to divide this range on the equal numbers as we use here so that it's 60. Okay, so do we divide uh, domain from 0 to 1? I forgot to mention, instead of using this component, we can just um, type into panel 0 to 1 and it's the same, uh, uh, same thing. Instead of using here component domain and slider 0 and slider 1. And we'll connect the result from the range into graph mapper. And we'll choose Bezier uh, graph type. As I said, we need to remap this result. Okay, this result with the domain 0 to 1, which we use here. And scale, oh sorry, and to a new domain from 0. With this domain, we are creating the scaling factor for the polygons say from 0 to 3 okay let's see what we got here this is definitely what we don't want it means we need to change this graph mapper something like something like this all right after we got the scaled uh, polygons we need to rotate them rotate And for this, we need uh, planes with, which I previously created. Origin, origin plane. So this is the origin, and the plane is this one. Okay. Right now, we need to define the angle for how much we want to rotate each of these polygons rotate okay and again uh, we need domain domain and range okay from 0 to 180 It means that uh, okay and this will be also here what what I did right now I define the angles so I let's imagine the first one will stay in on the same position the first polygon and the last one will be uh, rotated for the 90 degrees as you see here zero 90 degrees and uh, in between the values means how much the in between these polygons will be rotated if i change here the last one will be 45 degrees the result will be from 0 to 45 equally distributed numbers okay and uh, because we need here input in radians, but this is the input here uh, in the degrees. So we need to convert degrees to radians. There are command radians. Okay. All right. I can hide this one. Hide this one, and let I will loft the result to check what the current geometry looks like 
okay you see we can rotate if we want more this is how it looks right now if you want to rotate even more you can do it by changing this slider here but i will keep 90 90 degrees all right that would be the first part of the tutorial as i said the next part will be creating this vertical fins I can delete this oh sorry oh yeah okay I will delete this part and the next thing uh, will be creating um, lines from each of the control points so this will be the start point of the lines and direction it's going to be normal vector on this polygon so if we have the starting point here the normal vector on this side will be here then for this one will be here for this one here and for each of the control points of each polygon we will do the same thing like this later on we can create these fins but we will get to that point later sdl before that we need to define start point of the line and we can do that by exploding the polygon and right now we have this control points okay oh sorry vertex is the is the point and s means the segment of this polygon in direction we can uh, find by it's this one perpendicular frame it's located here we can use the segment and then the to define perpendicular frame from 0 to 1 and reparameterize this so okay perpendicular frame as you can see uh, the green uh, line represent y direction of each of these planes and this is the direction we need we'll deconstruct plane um, plane decon here and that will be in the direction just to check Just to check geometry. Okay, we got the fins, but uh, I don't want them to be the equal size of, of them. My idea is to change their width. So for example, here can be one dimension, here be the wi widest, and here will be, let's say, smallest. right so that means this should be changed this parameter and I will delete this then and create again new graph mapper as I said always I start with uh, domain 0 to 1 again range to one range will be here 
here. I will again use Bezier. Remap. The remap I will uh, I'm connecting uh, the output of the graph map read the value to remap S will be 0 to 1. This means the source domain and the target domain is here. So the minimum dimension of the line will should be equal with the shortest side of the um, polygon. We can find the shortest um, side of the polygon by component length. So these are the segments. Here are the segments. We can flatten them. Right now they're all into one data tree and by using sort list the list is sorted from the smallest to the largest value and by using list item we got the we got the dimension of the shortest um, sides of the polygon and that will be the minimum of the domain. Sorry. And the uh, maximum will be multiplied this value for from zero to for say I don't know to point something okay I know what is wrong right now here the data tree looks like this so 12 21 branches with uh, 12 items on each branch same is here as you can see oh actually no as you can see we have, we have 13 here here we have 12 to change this we'll use discontinuity i will explain why what's the difference between these two this command if you have triangle and you explode triangle you will get four values for this when you explode it for the point even though you have three points you will get four points this will be one two three and again this, this is the fourth i don't know why but that's how it works and this command will give you one two three points so that's why we need here uh, this continuity and not uh, not explode simplify as you can see here you see the difference 13 13 items 12 items we will keep this if this for the segments we have 12 segments that, that's correct All right and again you see 21 branches 12 items here is the problem one branch and 21 items so we have to graft this in order to get 21 branches as the other to match with the other data and when i plug this here okay right now it's correct again 
loft. Oh, sorry, flip. I'm doing this lofting just to see how the how the geometry looks right now. As you can see, right now the width of the fins are different. We can change the width by modifying by modifying this uh, graph mapper and also as well by changing this. Maybe this is too big. Yeah, this is definitely too big. All right. If we take a closer look to the position of these fins, we can see that these lines are almost in the same plane as the sides of the polygon. But here they are like almost 90 degrees. So it means we have to rotate these lines, these horizontal lines. So again, we'll use the range and this will have the rotation 90 degrees and this will have rotation zero. Or let's say this will have like almost 90 degrees because as we can compare here, it's like I can see that the angle it's a little bit bigger than, than zero. Here it's almost 90 degrees. Again, delete this one. After making these lines, we have to rotate them. Rotate. And uh, this is the geometry we want to rotate. Origin. Origin should be here. This is the. Ah, oh no, 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 sorry. This is the origin, and the plane is is this one. Just to check the data tree. All right, it's correct. They have the same, same data tree. And the angle, as I said, should be from zero to, to 90 degrees. But before that, we'll make another graph mapper. Zero to one. Connect with the graph mapper. Okay. Remap. Again, we need to graft and radiance to convert to radiance. Let's see the result. This is 90 and these are almost From 10, we can say from 10 to 80. Again, to check the geometry.
all right when y i use uh, graph mapper here we can change the transition of these angles so th this will be like 90 almost 90 90 90 and then immediately it will turn turn to the angle close to close to zero i just wanted to add one more layer of complexity but you don't need you don't need this part here you can just place this one here with the range we can place just this domain here instead of using graph mapper but as i said uh, quite interesting when you have one more component to play with and the final thing is to add the thickness of these vertical surfaces the best way is to offset these horizontal lines so we'll use offset this curve we want to offset plane again the same plane which we use here and again the same thing as here we can add one more layer of complexity so let's say on the bottom the the fins have a like smaller thickness and then in the middle has the biggest thickness and and on the top has again like smallest thickness let's imagine on the bottom the fins has like 0 0.5 for example in the middle has the one yeah. okay let's imagine if you want to add one more layer of complexity we can change the thickness of the fins along uh, uh, that axis for example on the bottom they have one thickness on the middle like the largest thickness and on the top um, they have a smallest thickness how we can do that with as i said with the graph mapper zero to one remap oh sorry remap will be later range we'll again divide on the 20 equal divisions connect with graph mapper let's say here on the middle we'll have the biggest thickness and then on the top and on the bottom we'll have the smallest remap these values source domain from 0 to 1 target values target domain first i need to create a slider then domain i have no idea let's let's try these values again we need to graft i'm sorry graft one thickness maybe it should be maybe it should be bigger flip matrix oh i know what is the problem i have to shift paths all right now again we have 21 branches 
with 12 items loft but before loft I will uh, flip the matrix all right I do same thing here all right but we have the gap to fill the gap we can find start points and end points and then we can connect all these end points and create this this line here I will explain what I mean by flip matrix if I use interpolate to connect them you see what I what I get it will connect end points on each tree branch so this this is one tree branch this is second this is third but I want to flip the tree branch I want this to be one branch and this to be second this to be this one to be third and then to connect them you see and then for each of these we should do the same and same thing here and then loft loft the outside one so this is the outside with another this is the outside okay and we'll fill the outside gap and but we, we still have the inside gap which we can fill by lofting the in one inside and uh, um, let me see yeah this one when I fill the gap I can just join the wrap join um, yeah B wrap join this one this one this one and this one let's see uh, we have 12 well, B reps. So each of these you can turn this off. I will just turn on the basic um, 3D shape, which is inside, and I can get it by lofting. All right. Okay, guys, that would be all for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you found it interesting, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any question, feel free to put in the comment section down below. Also, I would like to send special thanks to Mario, Philip, Igor, Ed, Alex, Alexander, Young, Morgan and Abdul. They are our new Patreon supporters. You can also get project files and definition by supporting us on the Patreon page. The link for the Patreon you can find in the description down below. Until next time, see you soon and take care.